crossed. Fingers crossed mm -hmm. that everything looks good. Uh, I don't think everything's going to look good. However, it's going to look different. Uh, okay. It's not coming up. Oh, there it is. Okay, it's coming up on the computer. Yes, here we are, folks. Okay. Welcome, everyone. Hopefully, uh, well, let's go ahead and mute this. Didn't realize I had it on my computer. How is everyone doing tonight? Uh, you can imagine, just like every single week, just like before every episode of Tank Talk Live, running around like an absolute madman. See how things look on the computer there. It looks pretty good. Okay. And you know what, folks? I've been sitting here in this spot for the last 30 minutes, ready to go. That one sitting across from me. Jeez. <sighs> That's a different oh, man, story. <laughs> the day before Valentine's Day, she just thinks, oh, okay, I can just do whatever I want to do. I can just be a diva and come on in last second. And uh... <laughs> so, okay, we have a lot of stuff to talk about in the in the what's going on segment. Don't you bump my camera. You are awfully close to my camera. I am just trying to get everything straight. I'm just not used to this setup. Okay, let me explain a little bit of something here, folks. <laughs> This was not planned until today. I got off work a little bit early today, went to the Verizon store, got my new phone, uh, did that whole thing, and I still got home early, which is not normal for me. And I said, you know what? Let's go ahead and set things up down in the basement. Why not? Just for fun. Now, it's not set up the way it's going to be. Obviously, you don't see any aquariums behind me. You see one behind her, which hopefully you've already seen because I did a video all about that tank. Um, but this was a kind of last minute thing. Let's slap it together. Let's let's come down here and let's just show everybody a, a little bit of what will be the new fish room. It's already my office now. What you see is my office. <laughs> we are in my <laughs> office right now. And yours is pretty messy behind you. <laughs> well, it was worse a little bit ago. Can we hear Lisa okay and everything? Why is everybody talking about can I see the manager? Is that the whole Karen thing? Is that yes. what it is? Okay. <laughs> can everybody hear Lisa properly? I, I have not even asked about that yet tonight. Um, I will wait to see what people say about that. I think there is a couple of second delay. Um Okay, somebody said, yep, maybe that means you can hear me. I don't know what that means, but I know you can hear me, but I don't know if you can hear Marie. Hopefully you can. Uh, nothing. All video, all audio is good. Okay, all right. So anyway, uh, this, this is going to be the new place that we will be doing our streams. Obviously, that was kind of the whole point of doing this. The stream is probably not going to be the most attractive backdrops except for that side of the table, but uh, it's a process, you know? We got to start everything, moving it down here, getting everything all set up. Uh, so it might not be the most beautiful thing to look at, but we're going to be down here. And it's a different look. It's a different thing. Everything's different. And, hope and your camera is getting in my way because I can't move my... Tablet yeah, this, to... you know what, we're going to have to spend some time kind of organizing this thing. If you only knew, folks, what I had <laughs> to do to get all of this set up, uh, it is a complete disaster right now. Everything is a complete mess, but you know, you got to start off somewhere, right? right? And I just bought these tables, uh, bought this table like two weeks ago mm -hmm. to set up down here and we loved it so much. We bought a second one and that's what we're sitting on now. Uh, this will be the streaming table where this one here is actually my desk where you see the computer and, and all that kind of stuff. So um, what I'm going to end up doing is tomorrow I'm actually going to do a walkthrough of this space, uh, which is there's a lot more to it than what you see right now. Right there, that goes around the corner and there's a whole bunch more room over there. Behind Marie, there's a whole spot you can't Wait, even see. Like I moved this way. Uh, where that you see that couch way back there in the corner and stuff like that. Uh, there's going to be a lot to see. I'm going to do a members only video tomorrow that's going to be just a quick kind of breezy walk through. Did I just say breezy? A quick walk through <laughs> of this space. But the real walkthrough is going to actually upload on Tuesday. 
uh, we're, we got a lot of stuff to clean up here. If you look behind me, all of that, all of it, the box there, all of that is all trash mm. because that young lady sitting across the table from me has spent the last two days going through oh, all... I thought you were going to say something like, she trashed my side. No. <laughs> she has been going through all of our storage stuff and getting it all put into new totes, getting everything all organized, and that is the trash that's left over from that. There's also yeah. a mattress back there. It's a disaster. The things you find yes. when you go through storage. <laughs> yep so there's going to be a few trips to the dump tomorrow uh which will be nice to get all that cleared out and then we can actually start projects down here which will be a lot of fun the first project is going to be your this is going to sound weird but your rack <laughs> <laughs> after that tool video the other day you know, but uh, uh if you see hey take your head and go like this which way that way Okay, so if you if you see that ledge, that is, uh, a, I'm pointing to it like, anyway, right yep, right there. If you see that ledge there, underneath that is going to be a rack that's going to be about 20 feet long, and it's going to be two tiers where you will have 10-gallon tanks lined all the way across, uh, so that's going to be exciting, and we're going to try to, she is going to try to do a theme that goes through all of them, uh, kind of all in the same Hmm. decorative style and all of that yeah. uh there's probably going to be a couple of tanks like serving as columns going into her side of the the fish room and all that it's going to be really cool a lot of really cool stuff all of this is going to be shown on video we will do videos of all of it i know i said that about the garage and i didn't end up doing it but you know i'm going to show you as much as i can and it'll be a lot of fun Quick walkthrough for the members tomorrow, full walkthrough of this space on Tuesday. Um, and then of course we'll have our Sunday live stream, or what? Sunday. Our Sunday 10 things episode, <laughs> which will go up. So absolute craziness happening around here. That's that. What Everybody's you... asking about Reno. Reno is not down here yet. <laughs> we wanna kind of take baby steps with Reno so <laughs> yeah and you know what there is uh there is something that I have realized we've realized it recently uh I uh, I've never talked about this I'm allergic to cats and my allergies to cats has always been if I pet them and if I rub my eyes I'm done like my eyes get all puffy and they get all watery and I get all weird uh but it's never affected me any other way. It's always just been like my eyes. As long as I don't rub my eyes, I'm okay. But out there right now, I think that it's because the room is a lot warmer now because mm -hmm. we're heating it. And there's no circulation. If you think about when we had the air conditioning on in there, it was bringing air in from the outside and it was blowing air out through the air conditioner. So there was some circulation in there now with just the heater being in there and absolutely no circulation i go out there and i'm out there 10 minutes and i start getting short of breath that's and, what they make claritin for in zyrtec well okay that's fine but I, I mean this is this has been something that i've realized over the last couple of weeks and it's actually been really bad so uh, what's going to happen with the cats i don't know i don't think it's going to be bad to have them down here because um, there's a lot more air circulation down here. And we can turn a fan on in here and you won't hear it because it'll be so far away. So I don't think it's going to well, be a big deal. That and I'll keep their cat stuff on my side. So not that there. it really matters. They're going to be like, oh, your desk. Ah, oh, this yeah. is my cat side. <laughs> yeah, see, that's the other thing. I've got my collector stuff that I, that I keep. I've got all of my bobbleheads and all this kind of stuff. I don't know where I'm going to put that, that the cats aren't going to get to it. So yeah, we got a lot of planning to do. It's going to be a, a challenge, but it's going to be a lot of fun. What you see right now is nothing compared to what it's going to look like uh, in the very near future. Uh, we're going to start moving stuff down here, start with the smallest tanks and, uh, and move our way up to the bigger ones. So going to be a lot of fun. I want to run through some super chats here real quick. Joel, Jay-Z says... Can I speak to the manager, please? There it is again. People are really... Uh, I think Corey sent people over to say that. Oh, that makes so much more sense now. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Corey. 
uh Kaler's Aquatics first super chat in the new room you were actually the second but you were the the biggest at that point so good right. for you. Thank you uh congratulations for being well for being number two Bob thank you <laughs> uh <laughs> Jason C twenty dollars you guys are the best love the new digs thank you thank to you. say you love the new digs when it looks the way it does right now it is that makes me feel real good uh let me keep going and then I've got couple more things to talk about before we get into the main topic. Uh, Robert Egan, did you install an independent dehumidifier? Yes, uh, it is actually behind all that rubble back there. Uh, it's back there. It, you'll be able to see it in future videos, not that we'll be showcasing it. Uh, Tracy Walker, happy early anniversary to my wife Aww, of 19 years that's tomorrow. So sweet. You got married on Valentine's Day? So How about that? So my best friend, Tracy. And my nephew was Crazy. born on Valentine's Day. I mean, I was Valentine's in Day? labor 25 years ago on Valentine's Day. There's a bug that's driving me crazy. So technically, my firstborn wasn't born until February 15th. Uh -huh. And he's going to be older on Saturday. 25. <laughs> yep, we got a birthday party, dual birthday party slash housewarming party for them. Yes, Steve and I got the best housewarming gift you can imagine i mean when you get a new house you need a fish tank so i got him a fluval flex did you yeah that's perfect yeah. i love it steam fought aquatics i i'm not i'm not really sure what this says you should have skipped it like he does matthew vargas all the time magic potty baby and her magic potty no water mess no water no mess batteries not included Bob, you're thinking weird thoughts right now. You're yeah. you're you're getting weird on us. <laughs> the reason why Bob did that is because he wanted me to make sure I mention that I'm going to be on his stream on Monday night. Oh. Next week is absolute madness, and I don't know how I end up getting myself in these situations. Monday, I'm going to be a guest on Bob Steenfot's live stream. Tuesday, I'm going to be a guest on Multi Tank Addictions live stream. And then Thursday, we will be uh, here again with you for Tank Talk Live. Everybody loves so, John. Uh, hey, you were on a stream the <laughs> other day. You need to talk about that. I had a lot of fun on Susie's stream. It was a yeah, lot of fun. You did a good job. I was down here watching it. It was fun. Oh. Uh, last thing to talk about with the uh, what's going on segment that we do. Uh, your bobblehead. Got news. <laughs> We got news about Lisa's bobblehead today. Uh, we ordered the bobblehead from the same place that the original bobblehead came from. If you don't know the story, the, somebody that's a member put up the emoji of my bobblehead head. Uh, I collect bobbleheads. I love them. They're my favorite thing in the world, uh, aside from you know her and the kids and, and all of that nonsense. But uh, I, bobbleheads are what I collect. I have got a lot of them. And... Jose Fernandez, just out of nowhere, sent us a bobblehead that was made of me. It was a bobblehead of me. It was the coolest thing ever. Uh, there should be somebody still. Uh... Oh, remind me of the one that says Lug Lugano wins dual one. Remind me to mention that. Okay. What? Because it has to do with where I was at today. So anyway, okay. <laughs> Lugano is a NASCAR driver. Does that cue you in? Okay. So Jose Fernandez <laughs> has a custom bobblehead made of me. And it, I cried when I got it. It was the most amazing thing ever. And I showed it on the live stream and everybody started saying, where's Lisa's? Where's Lisa's? Well, Jose said, he sent us a check just out of nowhere. He said, here's money. I'm not going through all that again. <laughs> now you, we know why. <laughs> yeah. You <laughs> go ahead and have one done of, of Marie. So I showed it on the live stream a couple of weeks ago. I showed the head, which I don't know if I still have available, but they, they emailed me the head of your bobblehead. Right. And it is amazing. It looks so much like you. It's, it's absolutely, it's kind of scary, actually. <laughs> well, that was like three weeks ago. And I, I emailed them yesterday and I'm like, hey, you know, any update here? We haven't, uh, we haven't gotten it yet. I want to make sure you didn't send it to the wrong address or something like that. Well... It's the coronavirus. It's in quarantine. <laughs> this is Bobblehead a... Bobblehead Lisa is in quarantine. 
Yeah, this there, this is a website that's out of China. I didn't realize that. It doesn't make a difference. I still would have ordered it. It doesn't matter. But uh, they're not letting anything come out of China right now. So yeah. the bobblehead has been put on hold, and hopefully it's... Uh, At least when we get it, I'll know what I look like when I was younger. <laughs> get it to, by the time you retire. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's going to be so cool. And, and what I'm thinking... Uh, I don't know how to do it, but I would love to at least be able to display our bobbleheads during these live streams. I thought about maybe that little ledge right there, like put a little shelf right there, and maybe I'll do the silver play button and then the R2 bobbleheads, but they'd still be kind of far away. I don't know if you'd see them in the live stream, but anyway, I would love to be able to do something like that, but we'll see. Who knows? I got to get it first. <laughs> so that's that. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's it for the, what's going on. There is the, this is the new digs. You're going to see more of it. If you're a member, you're going to see more of it uh, tomorrow. It'll be the first video I make with my new iPhone, iPhone 11 pro max, by the way, in case you're wondering what it is, uh, green, I got the green. You just can't tell. Cause it has this ugly case on it. I don't know how I feel about this case, but, uh, there'll be a, a members only video for that. The, a different video, which will be edited in much more detail will come out on Tuesday to all of the YouTube community. So You know, what I think is funny is that you're so excited about an iPhone, an Apple product. You just, you're so funny about Apple products. Hey. See, I'm different. I have nothing Apple, nothing. I have a note. I've always been a non-Apple person. My tablet is a non-apple product um my laptop too honestly i don't even really know what they are i just it's because have you haven't come work. over to the good side yet whatever <laughs> i mean you're still trying to figure things out that's all yeah it's all gonna start with that imac you said you wanted an imac to help with the youtube channel i fully support that idea because i need all the help i can get uh, so we'll start with that. That'll get you into the ecosystem. And then next thing you know, you're going to want the phone. You're going to want an iPad. You're going to want to watch. You're going to want to no. everything that Apple I have makes. A, a Fitbit. I don't need that watch. That's okay. You can hook that up to an iPhone. Because you even have that Apple watch thing in it. Where is it? I always forget to charge it. Leave me alone. Whatever. Let's stop talking about that. <laughs> I'm an Apple guy. I mean, you know, I, I, I'm no, you can, yeah, I'm an Apple guy. I love their products. Uh, I got this phone specifically because of the camera. That's that's why I got it, because this is going to serve as my camera B. I don't have to go and buy a expensive another DSLR or an expensive mirrorless or something. I got that now. So there you go. Uh, that's why I did it. So I am such a non-Apple person. I won't even eat apples. That's just pathetic. <laughs> All right. So main topic today is something that I thought of a while back. Um, and we're not going to get into it yet because I forgot. <laughs> not another, uh, not another what's going on thing. I forgot that we had a, uh, a chat come through before the stream started. It was from, was it Chelsea Riley? Is that her name? It came through. Uh, I did not, I didn't save her name. Shame on me. But I'm pretty sure it was Chelsea Riley, I think is her name. She's a member. And uh, she asked, John, any ideas on what to do for a Fluval FX6 that's got a rattling motor? Now, I was going to type it all up and answer her that way. But I decided it would be easier because I'd end up typing some big, long paragraph. I said, no, forget it. I'm going to answer it on here. So here's the thing. Uh, you have to think about how aquarium filters work, power filters. Forget about sponge filters and all that. Those are air driven. Any kind of power filter that you have, it has an impeller in there. And what that is, it's like a, it looks like a, a, an airplane propeller and it spins and that's what draws water into the motor. It, the, the impeller, it's magnetized, it's hooked up to the motor and it spins. And that's what draws water. I just said the same thing two times in a row. 99.9% .9 of the time when a, f a filter is rattling, it's either, if it's a hang on the back, sometimes it could be something like the lid is loose or something like that. Obviously that's not the case for you. 
if it is a, uh, a, a really an FX6 or pretty much any canister filter for that matter, it's almost always going to be that impeller. Something is either hitting up against that impeller. It could be a, a grain of sand. It could be a, 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 a leaf is wrapped around it. It could be something that's in there impeding the impeller from spinning freely. Uh, or it could be that the impeller has just gone bad. Uh, what I would do if I were you is I would go ahead and order a new impeller. Just type in impeller for FX6 filter. It'll pop up. It's all over the place. If you can't find it on Amazon or something like that, I'm sure they have one. I'm certain they have one at fluvalaquatics.com. I am not sponsored by them. Um, you could find it there. It's only going to cost you a few bucks. I would get one before you even start your investigation because those filters take a while to take them apart and get them out from underneath the tank and get all the water out and all of that nonsense. If you did all of that and then you have it and you take it all apart and you realize, yep, I need a new impeller. Now you got to put everything back together again. It's a huge hassle to get everything put back together, get it running again, order the impeller, wait for it. You understand what I'm trying to say? Skip all of that. Uh, did she pop up? I'm still trying to, I want to make sure I, I gave the right name. Um, skip, skip all of that. Forget all of that. Order the impeller first. It'll cost you like five, 10 bucks. Have that, open things up, check it out. If it needs to be replaced, replace it. Or if you've had it for a while, just go ahead and replace it anyway, whether it needs to or not. It's probably just rattling around in there because it's worn out. So most of the time, that's what it's going to be because it's not usual. It, it's unusual for stuff to get all the way to the impeller. So a little grain of sand could be, but most likely the impeller's just gone bad. Swap it out. It'll purr like a kitten and the filter will run like it's brand new. There you go. Like a kitten, huh? <sighs> Let's not get started on that again. <laughs> and... I hope, I hope I was able to answer that in time before she had to leave because oh, there it is, Chelsea Riley. Yes. Okay, good. I was right. Um, okay, now, now we get to go on to the main topic unless you had anything that popped up that you want to say. Hmm. I don't want to be accused of only t being the only one that does any of the talking. Well, if I had something to say, I forgot. Well, you know what? <laughs> that's, why you, that's why you should have an apple product because then you could have a note app and you could take notes like I do. I own paper and pencil. I can do that. Oh, yeah. But what do you, what's it? 1959? Jeez. Okay. Anyway. I mentioned something. Was it on my live stream or one of the nine guest spots I did on live streams recently? I don't know. I, I don't know. I can't keep up with all of your celebrity-ness. Yeah. Says the one that's going to be, Never mind. <laughs> it was during a live stream that the, the 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 tagline, if you will, let's keep fish keepers fish keeping, that happened. That's always kind of been my philosophy, our philosophy. I started the YouTube channel. You came along when, you know, you didn't like me getting attention, so you wanted some attention, so you came what? into it too. Whatever. <laughs> and, and it's always been our goal with this YouTube channel has always been to keep fish keepers fish keeping because you have a constant circle. Fish keeping is, is a circle and it sucks because what you have are people coming in and going out nonstop. It happens all the time. And we're going to talk about some of the reasons why they, they go away. I have stuff all over my shirt. Uh, but that's why you shouldn't look at yourself while you're talking. It's a constant circle. People get excited about this hobby or their child convinces them to get an aquarium. They get an aquarium, they're all excited, everything's great, and then what happens? Inevitably, it happens. And you know what it is. They have their first crash. They didn't pay attention to the cycle. They don't know that there's such thing as a cycle. The guy told them, put this little stuff in there and it's gonna be fine and you, you just your fish will be okay. They don't know anything about that. So when something breaks bad, they don't know what to do. So <clears throat> they flush the fish, they go out, they buy more, they put them in there, those die, and they say, F it, I'm out, this is too much. 
I'm putting all this work into this. I'm spending all this money. Little Jimmy keeps getting upset because the fish keep dying. It's not worth it. We're just going to get rid of this thing. It happens nonstop. Occasionally, you have somebody that makes it through that. They're determined. They're like, I, I love this. I want to keep these animals. This is a beautiful thing. I want to keep going with this. Even though I'm struggling, I want to learn how to, to keep going with this. And so they make it through that, that, what's that stage? What should we call that stage? That, oh, who knows? I mean, this is why you should have a plan before you start talking about a big topic like this. But they go through that initial stage where we all struggled when we started keeping fish tanks. And they get through it. That's when the true love for this hobby begins. And that's when they start looking at, oh, I want those fish, but I can't keep them with the fish that I already have. So I'm going to go get another tank. And I gotta, And next thing you know, they have 1,600 square foot basements that they're going to fill completely with fish tanks. And they're on YouTube talking all about it. It's madness. But more people bail than stay. I'm convinced of that. I don't, yeah. <clears throat> I don't have any data. Corey is the, is the data guy. Maybe he would know. I don't, I don't have any kind of data. I don't even know if there is data on it. How would you even know? But I think more people bail out of this hobby than any others. And, or, or I said that wrong. More people bail than stay. Those of us, we've got 368 people in here watching right now. For us, we made it through that. Or maybe you're just going through that stage right now. You just found this channel, you, whatever. But we're in and we're staying because we love this. Most people don't. And so it's always been my goal with this channel to keep people, to keep fish keepers, fish keeping. I never put that together until whatever day it was I was on that live stream. I don't remember when it happened, but... My goal has always been to help people get through that initial stage of this hobby so that they can get over that hump and they can be one of us. That's what I've always tried to do. And that is something that I, I kind of, I want to run with. You're going to get, you're going to ruin my table. Brand new table. You're going to ruin it. Look at all, look, look at that. I'm hot. <laughs> this woman came downstairs with an ice pack. John, you don't have to tell everybody everything. An ice pack. And I'm I said, what are you down. doing? She says, I'm hot. <laughs> it, it's okay. just an ice pack. I'm jumping here <laughs> on my software. I hope I'm not jumping on the feed. And it looks like I am. And that does not make me happy. Uh, I think I'm having an, another webcam issue. It's been happening. Look at me. I'm frozen again. Oh, boy. Here we go. There's always got to be something, right? And you know what? It's the cat. I'm telling you. The cat's ruining ruining our cat, webcams. He's not even down here. The camera's only been down here for 20 minutes. Okay. <laughs> uh, Road King Jr. I love the Harley Davidson Road King, by the way. Hey, John. Here's for going to Steampot's live stream on Monday. Awesome. I, I, I'm... Assuming you can still hear me, but I know you can't see me. Well, maybe now you can. This is I, frustrating. You know what? It looks like you're the only one frozen, not me. No, I know. It's, that's why I said it's this camera. Oh. Huh. I could do. <laughs> it's because you're an Apple user. Let's see. I could do this. <laughs> Put the camera just on you. I could do this. <laughs> Did you? I'm so far, like, behind, like. I'm like a minute behind, so I don't see what you're doing. Well, you'll see it in, in just a second. Uh, I switched over to the oh, laptop's webcam uh, because it this will prove that it's the webcam that's actually the problem. Chelsea Riley, thank you so much, John. Hope you hope to see you too at the BFD. You definitely will. Oh, we will yeah. be there. We forgot to talk about that. I'm actually really excited about that. Uh, it's coming up in a, in, a, in a month, one month from now. We will be in, uh, uh, let me make sure that the, okay, let's see. I'm pretty sure uh, we should be all good now. 
uh, as far as audio goes, I don't think putting this camera on is going to hurt the audio. So Wow, it's like it's looking up your nose. I know, it's terrible. It's horrible. <laughs> the camera on the MacBook Pro, it's a $3,000 laptop, and it's got the most BS webcam on it. I, I don't know why they do this. It's nonsense. But pay all this money, you ought to get, be able to at least get a 1080p. Um, I let me, don't know. Let's see. Look at this. We can actually have three up at one time. Nope, still frozen. So yeah, we're going to stay this way and it's going to look like trash. Yay, I'm going to be going and buying another webcam. I hate live streaming. It's the worst. <laughs> Seems the, like it works out great when you go on Bob's. Yeah. Is it because he's not an Apple user? I don't know. Oh. I don't know what it is. It's. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Oh. <laughs> the Big Fish deal coming up next month. Uh, it is... Officially March 14th, there's something going on. I don't I still don't even know what it is. Uh, something's happening March 13th. I keep looking at that camera, which is actually a mistake. <laughs> I'm supposed to be looking down here. Um, 87 cameras connected. Yeah, come on, Bob. I, the laptop <laughs> has a webcam on it. Leave me alone. God, you want me to come on as a guest? This is what I'm going to be talking to you on, is this webcam. Now I'll use Lisa's. Anyway. Really excited about the Big Fish deal. We're going to be streaming there, uh, not on our channel, but on everybody else's channel that's going to be there, which will be a lot of fun. And then uh, we're going to be giving away food. Extreme is going to send us three oh. cases of food to give away. Uh, I thought you meant uh, regular food. I was like, what? Well, no. <laughs> uh, look at me. I don't give away food. <laughs> I, I put food in is what I do. But uh, no, Extreme is going to send us three cases of their uh, krill flake, which I will be giving away to anybody that's there that wants it. So I'm going to be handing out food all day long because that's like that's like 150 cans. I mean, they're sending a lot. So it's going to be very, very cool. I'm excited <clears throat> about that. And then, of course, you will be doing a demo, uh, which, you know, we don't need to get into how nervous you are. We're going to get you through oh, it. I'm fine. So it's going to be fun. Big fish deal is going to be a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, come out there and see us and hang out. It'll be a good time. Angela Cross, we know who that is. And she didn't even say anything. She was like, I feel bad. John's going to have to go and buy another webcam, even though he just bought that one three weeks ago. Thank you, Angela. Thank you, uh, Angela. We have been begging your husband to come to Maryland to come to this show next month. And he's I said think, he's bird watching or something. Yeah, when I, I think I messaged him back when we found out and I thought he said something about Florida there's another event that he's going to that's that's all I know of uh where can we get the free food come to the big fish deal that's what we were just talking about uh it is a show that's going to be in Gaithersburg Maryland it's going to be a lot of fun it's a smaller show uh but it's going to be a really good time so come on out there yeah. hang out with us hang out with king and queen cichlids fish room fever uh, Bob Steenfot's going to be there. No, he's not. I'm just trying to get him in trouble. Uh, there's going to be a lot of us out there. Oddball's going to be there. Rachel's going to be there. Rachel O'Leary, folks. Come on now. Uh, Amber, lots of people. Amber and JH. Yep. Did I say King and Queen Cichlids? Uh, who else? Fish Room Susie Fever. Susie Q. Susie Q. It's going to be a blast. We're going to have all kinds of fun. So come out there, hang out with us. But we need to talk about keeping fish keepers fish keeping. Look at that light. Okay, here we go. Does that help, folks? You y'all had that light shining right in your face. Um, all right, so so here's the point that I'm trying to get to when it comes to let's keep fish keepers fish keeping. This has been what I've tried to do with this channel since the very beginning. If you go back, I'm not trying to pump myself up here, folks. I'm I'm getting to a point here. If you go all the way back in my channel, almost everything that I do in this channel is entry level stuff. It's not because that's all I know. It's because what I'm trying to do, like I said, I'm trying to keep fish keepers fish keeping. That's the priority of this channel. And I think we all need to do that. One of the things that we're gonna be talking about, uh, or I guess the thing that we're gonna be talking about uh, on the multi-tank addiction stream is, uh, I forget what he named it exactly, but it's like uh, the impact that social media has on fish keeping, uh, which is a great hobby. That great hobby, a great topic that I could talk about all day long, and I'm excited to talk about that. 
But what I think needs to happen here is we all, all of us that are creating content on YouTube or those of us that are in the chat right now that maybe you don't create content, but you're involved because I see a lot of names that are in this chat. We see them every week, the same people all the time. And, and we love you, by the way, and we welcome you. Thank you for, for coming by and hanging out with us every single week. It's, it's wonderful. We all need to keep fish keepers fish keeping. Mm -hmm. And here's why. First of all, we love this hobby and we know the, the, the serenity and the, the tranquility and all of the other illity words that this hobby brings to us. We know that this hobby is a great source of therapy. It's a great source of stress too, but it's a great source of therapy. Can we all either. know the positive impacts that this hobby can have on, on our personal mental health, but also in raising, that didn't sound good. Raising our children, teaching our children responsibility, all of these things. There are so many positive effects of this hobby. We want to help as many people as we can, right? We live in a world where everyone's depressed all day long, every day. It's all you hear about anymore. An easy way to help people with something like that is to provide them a hobby like this to keep going with. And if they come in and they bail three months later, they're not doing any good to anybody. This hobby slows down. It stops growing. Next thing you know, we don't have anything to come on YouTube and talk about anymore. I think a lot of the problem too is some people start fish keeping because they're like, I want to get a fish tank. I want to keep fish. And then they don't have friends to talk to about it. And then they lose interest because they failed for some reason, not doing their research or whatever. And after the first time, they're like, you know what, I'm just going to go donate my tank to Goodwill or whatever thrift store. But it's, it's like, if you have somebody to talk to, or you're on YouTube, you know, going to live streams or just interacting, I think it helps to keep you in the hobby because people, people want to help. Everybody's willing to help each other. And that's what makes this an awesome community is because whether it's trying to get people to the next level as far as how many subscribers, you know, they get or, or if it's just to help them with, you know, problems with their fish tank or just helping to let them know where the next show is so they can meet people. And I think it's just so important that people have other people when they're in this hobby. Well, I couldn't agree more. And, and the thing is, you know, a great analogy. I had to change the brake calipers on my Dodge Ram last weekend. I did the pads and the rotors the weekend prior. And then once that was done, I realized I needed new calipers. And I'd never done that on a Dodge Ram before. I'd seen others do it, not on a Ram, but I'd seen others do it on, a, on vehicles. I go to YouTube and guess what I found? 250 videos about changing the brake calipers on a Dodge Ram. Hmm. I learned how to do it in a matter of 30 minutes. I went out and I did it. Now I'm a pretty handy guy. I mean, I, I can figure things out pretty well. And I like grease. I like getting dirty. I like jacking I the truck up. I helped. She yeah. helped me bleed the brakes. She pumped the brakes while I... Hey, anyway, you couldn't have done it without me. I wouldn't have been able to do it without right. you. You're absolutely right. right. I would have had to call one of the kids. But anyway, the point that I'm making is... Compare me to a kid. We all know. <laughs> we all know how powerful the internet is. We all know that when you have a question about something, you can turn to the internet and you might not run into a community. I didn't join a community of people that are into breaks for Dodge Rams. But if somebody in 2020 has an issue with an aquarium, I think they're probably going to the internet. Because that's what we do, right? Or so, the mechanic shop. We're talking about fish tanks now, though, but but you understand what I'm saying. I mean, it, it's it's the place we all go to. My 75 year old mother, if she's looking for something, she goes to the internet and she learns it. And so it is absolutely critical. And we're going to be talking about this on Multi Tank Addiction Stream, probably extension of this conversation. But what we all need to do is make sure we are doing a good job of keeping people in this hobby, 
because in my opinion, and, and, and this is particularly to other YouTubers, if you're a YouTuber and you want your channel to grow and, and all of this kind of stuff, you want as many people staying in this hobby as possible. You don't want half of your subscriber count being people that quit the hobby six months ago. You want people staying in this hobby. So I think that we all need to get into the habit of making videos that are going to educate fish keepers. There's a lot, a lot of look what I have videos out there now. Um, look, I got a new fish. Look, I got a new this. Look, I got a new that. Those are great. They have their place. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to down anybody, but that's not teaching anybody anything. If you're a YouTuber, if you're a community member, I think we, we all have a responsibility of trying to keep people in this hobby. Because if we don't, we're not going to have anything to make tool videos about anymore. Mm -hmm. Because people aren't going to care about the silly stuff that Steve gets into. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get back into this in a second. I got a lot of orange stripes popping up here. Got to make sure I shout these people out. Uh, I want to... Okay, so fish man hype. Donald Trump, $2. We are not the Donald Trump campaign. You sent that $2 to the wrong place. I shouldn't have even said the name because like then people are going to be like, what do you mean? You're against Trump. What do you mean? You're a for Trump. I don't care. That's what I mean. Okay. Uh, but thank you for the $2. That's very cool. I will not be sending it to the Donald Trump campaign. HV8019, 499. I'm almost out of the hobby myself. Job change. I live in New York, but work in Miami now. Still love the hobby and my African cichlids. Yeah, I mean, you know what? Sometimes people are going to leave this hobby and it's because they have no other choice. I mean, if you're moving, if you had a death in the family, you know, something extreme happens. I get it that we're not going to be able to keep those people. But I'm talking about the people that are struggling, the people that are frustrated with this hobby. Those are the ones we need to be reaching out to and helping. Uh, that's what the Tank Talk Facebook group is supposed to be for. Uh, there's a lot of people in that group that do a wonderful job of helping new fish keepers. That, that Facebook group is strictly for new fish keepers. I mean, it really is. That's, that's why we started it. And, uh, and there's a lot of people in there that do a great job with just that. I'm going to start doing more with that group. I, I have to, I hate Facebook. Mark Zuckerberg is the devil. As far as I'm concerned, I hate Facebook but I'm going to get involved in that group more because I have to, because I have to practice what I preach. Sand Creek Aquatics with the 99 cent sunglasses emoji, which is absolutely adorable. Caitlin Herrick, love y'all. So happy you brought back 10 things. Yeah, we are too. And uh, I had quite a few comments. I keep looking at the wrong camera. Quite a few comments of people saying, you only brought this back because Corey said so. No, we've been talking about it for a long time. Oh yeah. Uh, Sure. Yeah. Corey did say so. And he was right because look, it's the two biggest videos of our, of the last month for us. Yeah. He wasn't wrong. Uh, we just needed kind of that kick in the butt. Uh, so I'm glad you like it. And, uh, we like it too. We're going to keep it going. Uh, aquarium maintained by Andy and the fish fam is growing. It definitely is. Um, there are people I've seen, uh, and, and I don't even remember I'm not going to say any names or I don't remember specifically what was said, but I've heard some negativity recently about the fish fam. Hmm. Um, and then, you, before you get on that, can you turn that light off or turn it? Cause it is right in my eyes. Well, but it serves a purpose. Well, turn it to your eyes. Now you're going to be there. very dark, but okay. Thank you. I mean, you see what I look like on here? You, you, you got it made over there. I look like, I'm 1952 on an old sitcom. <laughs> but anyway, fish fam is a beautiful thing. And uh, anybody that talks negatively about it, what, what, are you, what are you trying to do? I mean, are you trying to grow this hobby? You're trying to help people? Because that's what the fish fam is all about. Uh, anyway, Lady Gwen, Gwenifer, Gwenifer? That sounds like a character that should be on The Witcher or something. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> One of the main characters' name is Yennefer. Don't be offended. She is an awesome character. Probably the best thing about that show. Anyway, you should watch The Witcher. 
The latest tool was great. It gave me a good laugh. Thank you both for all the great content. I love Tanks of Our Lives. I absolutely love it. And uh, we got some plans for that. Some big ones. I just like giving you a hard time and pretending you're Steve. Yeah. See, that's the thing, folks. <laughs> that's me putting on a show. Obviously, I'm not as dumb as Steve is. But yeah, I pretty much am. But the way she treats, or the, excuse me, the way Karen treats Steve, that's pretty much my life. That's what Stop. I get. But uh, but thank you, Yennefer. I called her Yennefer for the, the $20. That is extraordinarily jealous. Jealous. Generous. This Steve. webcam has me all messed up. <laughs> Very generous of you. Thank you so much. Kumoki77 with $20. And all he's doing, he's just watching. Just watching us. That's all. Eyeballs. That's it. <laughs> Sam Penny with the $5 Australian, I believe. Hey, guys, quick question. Uh, one of my peacocks in my 60, get, 60 mixed tank is showing some battle scars on his fins. I have 14 fish. Add more, isolate him. Thank you. You want to go with that since you're the, the fish doctor? I was just listening to you. I have to reread it. One of my peacocks in a 60 gallon mixed tank is showing some battle scars on his fins. He has 14 fish. Should he add more or isolate him? Sam Sam could go either way, but I'm going to say him. Hmm, battle scars. Honestly, I would take him out and treat him. That's my opinion. I would take him out, put him in a tank by himself to heal him up so he doesn't get some kind of a bacterial infection in those battle scars in case some are open. Uh, treat him with uh, aquarium salt. That's what I would start with. Up the heat a little bit and do some water changes more often than you're used to, like maybe every few days. Um, and then if you want to put them back in, I would take all of them out, even though that's a pain in the you know what. Take them all out and then put them all back in at the exact same time, including him. That's my opinion. Great idea. Great. What? What wonderful advice. That's why I had you well, take that I over. Like, I know more about African cichlids than I think anything else, just because that's what I was raised on. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, You brought me up I in know. the African cichlid world. I, I mean, know. when it comes to treating them, feeding them, breeding them, anything, when it comes to them, I'm pretty fluent with that. Yeah, and the, the only thing, oops, I can't move my computer screen because then it takes me off the, the anyway. Uh, the only thing I would add to that is the the critical part about taking that fish out. Uh, we learned this a couple of weeks ago. We had a fish that had some scars, um, but we thought, eh, it's going to be fine. And two days later, he was dead. That, um, I think that's because you waited too long to tell me. I didn't even know until he was laying on the very bottom doing nothing. And you had said, oh, yeah, he's acting a little weird a few days ago when I was on the live stream of Bob. Well, if I had known that at the time, I would have taken him out sooner. Okay. And you would have done the right thing. But back to what I was saying before I got chewed out. See, Karen, this is my life. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's the thing. And it, but she's absolutely right. She's breaking my balls here, but it's true. If I had done something sooner, I would, I would have saved that fish. Because African cichlids are, are not only aggressive fish, but they're also going to pick on the weak. So if there is a fish that is injured and is a little sluggish and a little slower than normal, he's going to become a target for everybody in that yeah. tank. So more than likely, it's going to get worse. He's going to get beat to death. So take him out, set you up a nice little 10-gallon hospital yeah. tank. Even if it's a large, I mean, if it's a 14-inch fish, don't put it in a 10-gallon. But if it's a, you said it's a peacock. So, or did you say peacock? Who, it doesn't so, matter. Yeah. Uh, if, as long as it's a reasonable sized fish, put them in a 10 gallon tank. Doesn't cost a lot to medicate a tank like that if you need to. Right. Salt first, Melifix if that doesn't work. Uh, and sooner then, the better. But yep. the sooner the better. Absolutely. Um, and then I missed, wow, there's a, uh, what is happening here? Uh, Road King Jr., isn't this the second one for him towards the webcam? 999. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And another thing I did see someone mention, I wasn't, I don't know who. Hold on. 
da, 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 pull the Peplin Creeks Aquatic says pull the tank boss. Uh, that would be something I would do if it did continue and become like a habit. Like it was something that just constantly happened. But um, we've done that. You had to take one out before. We've done it. I mean, but eventually things do kind of work their, their yeah. self out. Yeah. I mean, there, there becomes a hierarchy and everything's okay. Chasing is never really a bad thing. It's going to happen in an African tank no matter what. But you'll get to a point where fish will stop taking damage and, and everything mm -hmm. will be okay. And everything will be, you know, everybody will get along. Uh, but you have to keep an eye on it. And don't be stupid like me. Be smart like you. You see that your fish has some damage. You're asking right now, what do I do about it? That's a good thing. Don't be dumb like me. I thought the fish was fine. I was like, ah, I mean, it's not like he was laying on his side on the bottom of the tank. I mean, he would just had a couple of marks. Could have been from the rocks. I didn't know. And I left him in there and he's dead now. And he was a gorgeous redfin borley eye. It was like nine inches. Beautiful. Dead. So... Yeah, don't be dumb like me. Mark Hill with the $25. Where have you been, Mark? We've missed you. <laughs> uh, had fun hanging out with that guy in Chicago. That was a blast. Good guy. Um, I'm sure he's going to be at uh, Dallas Aquashella, oh. and unfortunately, we will not. Uh, we did make the decision. I made the decision. I'm not even going to try to go down there. It's not that I don't want to go to Dallas Aquashella. It's with high school graduation that day. Because Saturday's really the day. It's just not. It's just not going to be something that's going to work out. But maybe, uh, maybe Mark will make it up to Chicago, and uh, we'll see him there. That'll be awesome. Uh, Kaler's Aquatics with the cheerleader, ten dollars. I think that's become pretty much a normal thing for him <laughs> with the cheerleader every single week. Uh, Moonstruck KK for the cat food cat food fund. Aww. <laughs> uh, twenty dollars. That is oh, substantial. You. That's a lot of cat food. Thank you so much for that. Uh, John is live streaming in 2004. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for, uh, yeah, it's very true. <laughs> There's nothing I can do. It's either look at that or look at this. Yeah. We don't want that. And Candy said, thank you for the 150 likes. Thank you. 150. Wow. How about that? 10 dislikes. I don't That's care okay. about those. You know, we don't highlight those. John, you are missing a cat from the fish tank barn. Yeah, you're late, Mike. You're late because uh, we talked about that. Uh, we talked about the uh, the lack hey, of a cat down here. We're on the opposite sides now. It just popped up for me. Okay. Well, let me take myself off. Okay. How do I do this? Okay. I put myself on. That's my bad side. Then I add you. Just kidding. <laughs> it's the same way either way. Yeah. Sorry I'm about just that. Kidding. This is this has gotten all mixed up here uh, because of this webcam. It, it has to be the cat. He's chewing on them or something. I don't know. I don't know what's happening. He's killing our webcams, and it's two of them in a row now. And uh, these things are not even six months old, and he's broken two of them. So, and it's not like they're cheap crap. You know, they're nice 1080p Logitech webcams. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know what more could be done. But anyway. Okay, back to the the main topic thing here. I get so distracted with the super chats and all that. These people's generosity just makes me go crazy. Uh, yeah, I wish Apple made a webcam. It'd be a good one, except for this one. This one's bad. But if they made a real webcam, it would be a good one. So hmm. I, I hope I didn't come across earlier as if I'm like criticizing FishTube or criticizing us YouTubers saying we need to do more. That's not where I was trying to go with that. What I was trying to say before is hoping that, that God, I keep forgetting I can't do that. I think that the critical thing about us keeping this hobby going strong and getting bigger, this hobby is a lot bigger now than it was when we started our YouTube channel. I mean, it, it's grown immensely. And mainly that's because of the access to information that people have. Uh, you, you mentioned that earlier that, you know, not having somebody to talk to back in the day was a struggle. You've never had that problem because you always had me. And then there was always the Internet. The, the fish store. And the fish store. That but was fun. For me back was, in the day, it yeah. was only the fish store. 
uh, you would have people every time you go to a fish store, the, the people who work there would be on the phone because people would be constantly calling them. Hey, my fish died. What do I do? And it was almost like they would have a full time job sitting on the phone answering people's calls. You go to a fish store now, nobody ever calls because everything's online and they look at everything online. And a lot of times that fish store's inventory is online. So there's not really anybody calling anymore. The internet, uh, we all know, has become a, a, the main place where everybody gets our information. So let's give them as much information as we can. That's what I was trying to say. I wasn't trying to criticize anyone or saying we all need to get off of our asses and do more. We should all do more, but I hope you understand what I'm saying. I wasn't trying to, to be critical of, of anybody in particular. I do think, though, that we YouTubers, whether you're somebody that has 200 subscribers or 200,000, I think we all have kind of a responsibility. If you've taken the responsibility to try to grow a community, then you should be trying to nurture that community. And if you're coming up with ideas for new videos, come up with videos that are going to teach somebody something. Don't be afraid to go back to the basics because that's what we've done all along. And we just, before this stream started, passed 155,000 subscribers. So that's all from doing bare bone basics, entry level stuff. Yep. Why is that? It's not because we are so good at it. I mean, we're decent. It's because people want that information so bad. So don't be afraid if you're a YouTuber, if you have 100 subscribers. I would really encourage you if you have 100 subscribers to do this, but it doesn't matter where you are. Create content that is going to go out to those new fish keepers. Make it a point. Maybe we should do a, a, a thing where we pick a month of the year and it's like beginner fish tank videos month. Or, you know, I, I'm, this is a stupid idea that's coming into my head right now, but that's, that's what I'm trying to say. Let's all nurture this hobby and not spend as much time on the ultra advanced stuff, not spend so much time on the look what I have stuff. Let's provide people with stuff that's gonna help them stay mm -hmm. in this hobby. Because if we don't, like I said, it's not gonna be long before we're not gonna have anybody to talk to. We're gonna and, be making videos and nobody's gonna watch. And don't Google it and then repeat it because you might Google the wrong thing. <laughs> Make sure you know what you're talking about before you do a video about it. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. I mean, it's not hard to do a video on the simple things, the bare basic type of things. But I... Especially if I think, I think videos where people talk about their mistakes and what they learned, you know, from that mistake is just as important. That's those are some of the best videos on YouTube. And you know, I, I, I guess that's where I'm going with it. Like, you know, be real about it and talk. I I move this camera out of the way now. Sorry. Oh. Talk about you know what worked for you, what didn't work for you, because not everybody is going to have the exact same experience. <clears throat> but it's important to get different views. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. I agree 150%. Um, in fact, I'm going <coughs> to add to that a little bit. Um, I would not encourage, you, you didn't either, it, you were against it. So I'm kind of adding to what you were saying. I would not encourage somebody, if you don't know something, don't Google it and then make your video. It, there's a perfect example of that. Of course, we're not going to say who it was, but you and I were sitting down watching a YouTube video recently and you said, that person just took that straight from Google mm -hmm. and it was a fish keeping video. And it, now that doesn't mean it was a bad video. It doesn't mean that the information was bad. It was just very obvious that that was pulled straight from Google. The problem is not everything on Google is right. That's very true. <laughs> so my advice, if you're, if you have a, if you want to make a video about something that you're not all that familiar with, like for me, I am not the best at diagnosing fish diseases and medicating them and stuff like that. So if I'm going to make a video on something like that, I'm going to talk to Rachel O'Leary. I'm going to talk to Corey McElroy. I'm going to read articles that were written by 
you know, veterinarians and stuff like that. I'm going to get as much information as I can, and I'm going to do this for a long period of time. I'm going to talk to as many people as I can and get all the information that I can. I'm going to formulate my opinion, and then I'll be able to feel confident right. giving the right information out. If I was to go and read one article and say, okay, now I know about that. I'm going to go make a video about it. I'm not saying that to, it's going to be wrong, but it could be. So it's, Yeah, it's definitely good to get more than one source. You know, I have books. I order books. I just, I don't care what year they're from. I like to read about fish, whichever one I'm interested in at the time or all of them. It doesn't matter. I read articles from magazines, books that I've ordered, just things. I, I'm, I'm interested in knowing where we are now compared to where we were 40 or 50 years ago. It's interesting. I mean, that was the only way people learned back when we were younger, when our parents were doing it or whatever, you know, I mean, it's a really good, valuable source of information to, to go back and just read stuff. But even, even with that though, that I, I agree hundred percent, but you read one book, you're reading one person's I said experience. More, more than yeah. one. I mean, that's the thing. What I'm saying is it, to read one book and do that would be no different than reading one Google article. So yeah, read as many books as you can. Um, and meet people. Meet the people that know. People that have been around the fish you're interested in and get their opinions. My best source of information for discus is Hans. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have learned so much from that man that I. It's it just, helps that he's a friend, too. <laughs> it's unreal how much I've learned from Hans. And that's why I I just feel so good about his fish, because I know that, you know, they were bred the right way and they're good fish. And always I would recommend Stenker Discus. Um. I'm, I, I don't know how to say the first name, uh, Asire Cruz, I'm, I'm just going to say Cruz, uh, asked the question that makes my point for me of this whole discussion that we're having here. The question is, what would be the best source to seek information on fish keeping? My answer to that in 2020 is YouTube. I mean, now there are the books. I feel, I'm so embarrassed with these lights. They're just a nightmare. There are tons of books like Marie was just talking about. Magazines are becoming hard to find. Uh, there's tons of articles on different websites, things like that. There's a ton of information out there. I personally learn best, no matter what it is I'm doing, I learn by hearing other people's experiences. That's, that's what helps me formulate my opinion on things. So if I want to get a, if I want to know about this phone, I want to watch reviews from people and hear their personal feelings about it. The big shots that get paid and stuff like that, I, I mean, I still watch those too. But hearing people's actual experiences and their thoughts about whatever it is that I'm looking into, to me, that's what I learn from the most. And I mean, it goes back to my childhood of I'm a see it person. I may show me how to do something one time and it's in there. I, I've got it now. But if I have to read how to do it, it's not going to absorb but into see, the brain as that, well. That's just like the um, question that you were reading off to me uh, about the, um, the hurt fish. I had to go through, find it and read it for myself because hearing you say it didn't it didn't click. I needed to read about it. So not everybody is the same. Well, and we all, yeah, absolutely. We all learn our own way. Um, but to me, the reason why I say YouTube is because, first of all, it's so easy to find. And probably every larger YouTube channel has done a video on pretty much every topic there is on fish keeping. So if you find somebody that you do like, maybe it's us, maybe it's Corey, maybe it's River Life, maybe it, who knows who it is but you find somebody that you like and that you trust, you can get their opinion about those things. I just I don't think know. I'm, I'm not trying to be 
argumentative and sure you are, disagree with you on this, but I don't think YouTube should be the first choice when you're trying to figure out what to do with fish. I think it should be maybe part of it, but there's so many things on YouTube that aren't right and they're not the right information. You know, I mean, it's just not, it wouldn't be is my first Is it the wrong source. information though, or is it just that person's personal experiences? No, See? some of it is just not right. And I'm not I mean, going to name names or people anything People could say like that about that. our videos. I mean, I, but, but it's, it is what it is. Okay, but I'm, I guess my point is you're, if you're looking up something that has to do with a life and how to take care of that life, you should get more than a YouTuber's Totally view. agree. But it is the easiest and most accessible place. Okay, but watch more than one. Get a lot of different... Sure. A lot of different views on it and, and opinions and make sure you pick the right one. I guess that's my point. Peplin Creek Aquatics. First time I've seen that name says, cycle is the most important topic for beginners. This is why we've done like 12 videos on that topic. And good old Dr. Ted criticized us for that. I was never supposed to mention that name, but that channel's been deleted. So uh, broke our balls, my balls, because you know you don't have those, but He's about making fan. about making cycle videos. But but Peplin Creek Aquatics is absolutely right, and that's why we've done so many videos on it, and we've done it in different ways. We did a Stephen Karen episode about it. It was the first one that we did. We did 10 things episodes about it. It, it is the most critical part, and it is the probably the most misunderstood part of this hobby. And that's why we've done so many videos about it, just trying every way we can to explain that in a way that, that people can understand it. Because it's not a complicated process once you understand what it is. Right. I mean, but if you don't know what it is, you're looking at it like, what? This just doesn't make sense. So there you go. What else is people saying in here? Vet the YouTubers by their sub count. Um, uh, yeah, I I, yeah, you know, I know what? <laughs> I know somebody that has a lot of knowledge. And um, not very many subscribers. Ted Judy. Oh, well, oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that right there, that man knows his stuff. But, you There know. are a lot. I mean, it, it is true. I, I think that... Uh, Mark Dibble, I think you're right, but <laughs> subscriber count doesn't necessarily indicate that YouTuber's wealth of knowledge. Oh, because there's some people out there that I'm not going to name any names, but they do things. You that, really want to because you keep bringing it up. <laughs> but they are cruel to fish. And they're considered fish channels. I'm not going to mention the no. teenagers' names. No. But I think they, everybody already knows who you're talking about. <laughs> but th they have more subscribers than somebody that has a lot less that knows so much more and is in it for the right reason. So I don't know. It's kind of hard to go by a subscriber. Count. I can say this. Uh, we just passed 155,000 subscribers. We're, we're a little bit ahead of Rachel as far as subscriber count goes. I think she's at like 130. Uh, so we're, we're a little bit past her. If you take the amount of knowledge that I have after keeping fish 25 years and the amount of knowledge you have after keeping fish 10 years, you multiply that by about four and we still don't have as much knowledge as Rachel does. She's awesome. But our channel is bigger than hers. You see what I'm saying? So it, the subscriber number doesn't always indicate their level of knowledge, but you're right in that if they're popular, it's for a reason. They're obviously, they do a good job of conveying the information or whatever it is. So yeah, you should take those seriously, but there's a lot of channels out there that are micro channels, very small, that have way more knowledge than I do. So, you know, you don't have to be a big channel to be knowledgeable, but usually the big channels are, if that makes sense. I don't know. Or at least have a little bit of it. Ah, uh, uh, yes, that guy, the Logan Paul of fish keeping. 
<laughs> I didn't uh, say his name. <laughs> and and Lisa was actually not talking about one guy. She was talking about a couple of guys. But anyway, uh, but no, it, it's absolutely true. There are people, uh, and and that goes to the point of these are larger channels that get an outrageous amount of views that torture animals on their videos. So yeah, you know, <laughs> definitely vet who you're getting your information from. Matt Man B, have any of you heard of Green Water Aquarist Society? If not, go check it out. That is not one that I have heard of. Uh, we are so busy with YouTube and with fish rooms and buying new webcams. And this always happens whenever I do something big. Like, I spent $900 on two tables to use as desks. I just went out today and bought this phone. And then the webcam breaks. It doesn't, it doesn't break when I'm looking for something to buy. It breaks when I've already bought a bunch of stuff. Ridiculous. I hate webcams. Why do I even stream? All I have is problems. Our first night down okay. here in the new fish room. And the webcam breaks. It's just so frustrating. <laughs> I enjoy giving back and being a good source for beginners. And see, that's that sums up my entire point that I'm trying to make here. Aquarium Conversations. That's a great name for a channel. Mm -hmm. I think that we should all be doing that. I, I think that, and I, I haven't really talked to anybody about this. We're, we're going to do a talk. Uh, well, I shouldn't have said it that way because it's not like we're doing it in front of the auditorium, but... We have uh, organized a meeting of YouTubers at the Big Fish Deal the night before. Uh, we're going to do a dinner or whatever, and then we're going to go somewhere and do like a like a roundtable discussion. You don't even know about this. No, I'm like, uh, really? Am I invited? <laughs> where it's going to be discussing things on about YouTube and stuff like that. And, and this is going to be one of my ways of a way for me to help smaller channels to, you know, let them know what I know about growing YouTube channels and stuff like that. But one of the things, spoiler alert, I see Fish from Fever in here. Didn't I just see him? Yep. He's going to be there. Spoiler alert. One of the things that I'm going to talk about is not being afraid of going back to the basics, go to the entry level stuff. You might think, well, if I'm doing beginner stuff, people might not take me all that seriously because I'm talking about the stuff that's really easy. But the thing is, in my opinion, the majority of the people that are on YouTube watching videos, that's what they want. We've built our whole channel on that. And I think that that's the thing that is probably the most critical to survival on YouTube is providing what the masses want. Uh, people that do look what I have videos and all they do is fish store tours and stuff like that. They provide a great service too, because what they're doing is it's inspiration. You see a fish that you've never seen before. Oh, I want to have that. You see a, a nice aquascape. Oh, I want to have that. They serve a great purpose too. But to me, I want to grab a hold of that person that's been keeping fish for two months. Their water's never been clear. It's been gray ever since they got their tank. They can't understand why they can't. They keep putting all these chemicals in it and nothing's working. That's the person that I want to reach on YouTube and keep them in the hobby so that several months later, they put up a comment on one of my live streams or one of my videos that says, you know what? I was almost out, but I stayed because I watched your video. That's, that's the reward for me. So, and I, I think that it is a, it's a great feeling. I've had that. I mean, you've had that. We, we have had that multiple times, more times than we can count. The comments, the people that come up to us at events, the, the people that email us personally or, or send messages or whatever, it happens all the time. And it's a beautiful thing. Trust me, you want that feeling because it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Jimmy, how dare you come in here and act this way when you see I'm struggling here. <laughs> this is so embarrassing. I don't even know what I'm going to do. I just want to stop. I don't I don't even want to live stream anymore. I just want to stop it. Oh, shut up. Tomorrow, I love it. Tomorrow he's going to go buy a new webcam and be all, let me get ready to stream on Monday night with Bob. And I mean, I can use your camera for that, but I need to get one by Thursday. 
Those are 120 bucks. What am I going to do? Go buy another one every two months? I mean. Then you just stream. I won't stream with you. No, people <laughs> won't like that. This looks really bad. I mean, look at this. It's 720p. <laughs> Who's going to survive on YouTube? 720p. I got lights shining directly. Oh, come on. It's, it's amateur hour. Wow. But Jimmy, look at that. You. Oh, I forgot where the camera is. You know what those three circles means, right? Yep, I joined the big leagues today. Yes, I did. <laughs> Uh-oh. Bob Kaler just said something that I totally disagree with. Oh, whoa. Keep it no, to yourself. No, I don't totally disagree with. <laughs> I, I agree with, but not 100%. He said people sub the person, not the content. That is true. That is true. What I'm... I shouldn't have said I disagree with him because I love Bob. I've never even met him, but I love the guy. What I what I mean is we that's fine, but we want them subscribing for the content because they see the content and the content helps them and they stay with it. The help could be inspiration, and that's a good thing too. But we want to help to keep people around. And we're gonna do that by helping them understand this hobby more. And thank you to whoever decided to change their dislike from a dislike to a like. Thank you. That was nice of you, whoever did that. <laughs> used to say 10, and now it says 9. <laughs> okay, let me see what we got here. I hope Bob understands. I'm not arguing with the guy. I agree, but I I just wanted to add to that. I don't even know where to look because of my stupid camera. The same for quitting bosses versus companies. Hey, you know what? I quit a job because I hated the drive to get there. That is so funny. Jimmy said, I taught him better streaming techniques. He pees sitting down now. Oh, <laughs> Jimmy, that was a private conversation, my friend. <laughs> That's funny. Tiffany White, just a reminder to John that the second, <laughs> that the sound is more important than the video. Your sound is great. Well, thank you. Finally, somebody says something nice to me tonight and gave me money to say it too. That is very nice. I understand, uh, Tiffany, but the thing is I've spent so much money and I've spent so much time and, uh, and so much effort to try to make my side look as good as Marie's side. And and now here we are. Maybe it's just because I keep this Samsung note on my side and it just here has all go. the positive vibes over here. And just saying. You know, I should keep doing this. Thank you to whoever decided to change their dislike from a dislike to a like because now it's at eight. It just keeps on going down. <laughs> so I, I've thought about, and I'm not going to do this now, folks. I'm not going to do it now because that would be silly. But I want to have like a dislike video. I think it'd be fun to do a stream and see how many dislikes. Not this one. Please don't ruin it. <laughs> yeah, Bob. But <laughs> Bob's like, <laughs> when, I'd love that. When he did that last time, you had like 25 dislikes at the very end. I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah, I, I should. Oh, see, now it's back up to nine. Daggone it. I knew that was going to happen. Somebody's playing games with me now. <laughs> I'm getting an error after every chat I send. Can you see my comments? I saw that one, Andy. Just want to say thank you for all your videos on African cichlids because now they are my babies. See, that's what I'm talking about. That's what it's about. That's what we want. That is the best part about this. Problem in the chair, not in the computer. How dare you? <laughs> How dare you? No, the problem is the webcam is faulty and it's the cat's fault. Blame my cat. It's the cat's fault. I'm telling you. Could have been the dog. <laughs> can can uh, can you contribute somehow? I'm struggling to get these last 10 minutes. Find us something to talk about here, woman. No. Now you want me to. Let's see. <laughs> Jimmy says, I have a dislike video. LOL. I asked people to dislike. I got 100 dislikes. Yeah, see, that's what I was talking about. Now I'm at 18. And see, that's what's happening. Because really? people people are doing the opposite of what I said. I think it would be fun to do to that. Yeah. Like... Please, no one like the video, only dislike it. But, you know, you're going to have people that are going to do it tonight anyway. And that's fine because it really doesn't matter. It I, doesn't. I mean, it, a like or a dislike all equals, right? There's never been a time where I've made a video and been like, that video is great if it only ha didn't have so many dislikes. I mean, that's never come out of my mouth. Usually, if a video oh. has a lot of dislikes, there has to be a lot of views to go with it. So that's a good thing. Terry's Tropical Tanks, please 
Please don't get him started on NASCAR. Oh, I'm glad you brought it up. Oh, and now, I made it worse. This is perfect it's, for a story. It's such a, oh, I know why. Yes, yes. see? Okay. This is the perfect for the last nine minutes. It's not going to take all nine minutes, but there is a neighborhood near where I live. I live in King George, Virginia, but there's a neighborhood in Spotsylvania, Virginia, which is the next county over. And that neighborhood is called Fawn Lake. And it is like... It's almost like the Beverly Hills of this area of Virginia. It's not $5 million, $18, $30 million mansions. It's not like that. But they're very upscale, very expensive, very beautiful homes. And uh, I'm not going to talk about NASCAR. Don't worry. But I'm going to talk about somebody that's affiliated with NASCAR. Uh, I went today to a house in Fawn Lake that has been on my holy grail list for the longest time. In fact, let me see, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna show it on public live stream. Look at this, look how cool technology is. I'm gonna put this over myself. This is the picture that I sent to Marie. So this house, folks, that you're looking at in this picture right now, was built in like, 1980, late 1980, or maybe 1990, by a man who is a god in this area and will always be a god. He literally, he's not Catholic, but if he was, he would be a saint. This is the house that Joe Gibbs built. And I went to this house today. I had a customer in this house today that I had to go in and fix her furniture. And it is gorgeous. It is beautiful. He does not live there anymore. He sold the house when he retired from the Redskins. And the interesting thing about it is that he moved to North Carolina to start his NASCAR team and built a house identical to this one in North Carolina. That's what the lady told me today, though. Uh, so I don't know that as a fact, but that's what she told me. I thought that was so cool. I've been wanting to go into that house forever because I'm a Redskins fan. I, I'm not ashamed to admit it, kind of. And <laughs> I, so Joe Gibbs is like. I'm not even a fan of football anymore. That's how much they turned me off from football. Yeah, well, but that, uh, but that is a house that Joe Gibbs built. And in fact, he didn't build it with his bare hands, but you know what I mean. He had it built for him and his family. Um and uh, he was actually one of the people responsible for starting that neighborhood called Fawn Lake. Uh, all the houses are like that. They're big, sprawling. And that house is on a peninsula surrounded by th water on three sides of it. It's absolutely gorgeous. It is exactly the kind of house that you would expect a three-time Super Bowl winning coach would live in. It's beautiful. Uh, I'm thrilled that I was able to go in there. I have not watched a race in years, pretty much since I got with you. Uh, but if I, if I'm going to root for somebody, it's going to be somebody in a Joe Gibbs car because Joe Gibbs is the guy. And how could you not love Joe Gibbs? You can not like Kyle Busch and I understand that, but you can't dislike Joe Gibbs. Not even cowboy fans dislike Joe Gibbs. They'll be like, man, I hate the Redskins, uh, but that Joe Gibbs, he's a pretty good guy. <laughs> I mean, you know, you can't deny that. So anyway, that was fun. I was glad I was able to share that. But uh, yeah, what else do we have here? We got five minutes left. We're all going to go over to talk to, we're going to go spend some time with Rack tonight, aren't we? I don't even have to get up. I can just slide over to my computer um, okay. and put Rack Here's on. Here's one. Uh, Mike Stambaugh. Give a shout out to Big Rich at Ohio Fish Rescue. His wife isn't doing very well, and they are in our thoughts and prayers. And that is so true. You know, um, I know they have a GoFundMe and, and all that. So I know it would mean a lot for them to help out in any way. And it's it is really sad. sad. It is sad. I uh, never met either one of them personally, like in person, but you have, right? I met Rich, yeah. Yeah. She Just, may have been there. I, I I don't recall, but I know, I don't recall meeting her, but I know. Such a terrible thing. Yeah, I spent a lot of time with Rich. He's, he's one of those guys, you spend two minutes with him, you're like, that's a good guy right there. Yeah. And I'm not saying that because his wife is, you know, in the hospital. We all know Rich is a good dude. You watch one video and you're like, yep. 
not only is he a good guy, but what his whole mission statement oh, is definitely. for his business is just absolutely incredible. So, yeah, uh, and I, I was very sad to see that. Uh, you we were going to bed one night and you played his video that he did from the hospital. And I was like, great, that's that's great to watch that right before bed. It was, it was sad. It was very sad. And it's... The, the last update that I heard, though, that she was getting, there was a little bit more activity. The mm -hmm. last information I got was off Jay Wilson's stream. Right. He was there at the, at the Ohio Fish Rescue. Right. And uh, he said that she was starting to respond a little bit and, and move her hands. I don't want to give wrong information, but I was very, very pleased to hear that. So we don't want one of ours to be in trouble like that. So uh, absolutely. So thank you for whoever brought that to our attention. Because I always forget, because I'm a schmuck. That's just what it is. I try to have this whole outline, and then my webcam breaks, and everything falls apart. <laughs> and Corey's going to yell at me after this live stream. Oh. He's going to send me a message, and he's going to be like, how can you not have 12 webcams Back in up. boxes? Why didn't you just... <laughs> Scoot that Lisa over and get in her spot you and need, just send her upstairs. You need to have a backup and a backup <laughs> for the backup. That's a backup to the backup. Always be prepared. <laughs> Why me? You know, you watch these other streams. Rack's never had a problem. King and Queens, they've had a couple minor issues, but nothing like me. Why, why does it always happen to me? I don't understand it. If this was just you sitting here, there'd be no issues. Candace says, better you than me getting yelled at. <laughs> well, yep, yeah, I'm sure I'm going to hear it from Nobody Corey after this. Nobody yells at Candy. What should we do for the, uh, oh, we got to thank Robert Egan. Uh, did you sheetrock and finish out the basement or the fish room? No, this was done before we moved in. Exactly how you see it right now. We didn't paint these walls. They were painted this way when we moved in. Uh, what pretty, I did. Pretty blue. You it's like very blue. blue. It's Lots all blue. blue. Uh, I want to make sure all the backgrounds are off my fish tank so that every single tank they need has to be more blue. That blue. That yeah, blue I want the... like blue, blue background in my tank. So I'll take everything off the back of my tanks I have now, so that every single tank is blue, blue background. And there's only one person she's doing that for, and I'll be on his stream on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> what are we gonna tell people to go over and uh, use for the? For the hashtag to go over to rack. Uh, Come on now. Me? Yep. It's up to you. Uh, Joe Gibbs house. No, <laughs> nothing Redskins. Come on. Let's send people in positive. Tennessee are, are. Let's send positive vibes his way. Not that. Hashtag webcam. Webcam. Yeah. Hashtag webcam. That's what it's got to be. Hashtag webcam. Yep. Let's all go over to, the, to Rack's live stream. Uh, a couple of people, Candy just shared it. A couple of people have shared it. Let's go over there. Let's hang out with him and, and get some positivity in our lives. That's a guy right there that's doing it right. He's doing it positive, building community. It's a beautiful thing. So let's enjoy ourselves. Let's go hang out with him. And uh, yep. that way I can get off of this pathetic, pathetic webcam. And I can finally play with my new phone, which I haven't even been able to do anything with. Because anyway boys and their apple products <laughs> thank you so much everyone for tolerating this nonsense it'll be better next week i promise uh look for me on the scene fought aquatics live stream on monday multi-tank addiction on tuesday and then we will be back here on thursday for tank talk live tour of this room for the members tomorrow uploaded video on tuesday 10 things on sunday we're having all kinds of fun mm -hmm. thank you you get to close it out for us. Thank you for tolerating his stuff. And uh, we'll see you next time. Go see Rack. Go have a good time and hashtag webcam.